Good morning. It's Tuesday, March 22nd. And this morning I want to talk about the subject of free speech. I'm not against stopping anybody from speaking at a university. And the university in New York, Brockport, has invited a criminal man who killed two police officers and spent almost 50 years in jail invited him to speak at the university. Now this man is a member of a black power group or was a member of a black power group and he hates Jews and so he's going to speak at this university and they have been attacked for having him come and speak. They refuse to rescind the invitation. And I don't have a problem with that. What I have a problem with is the legal system that arrested this man for killing two police officers and sentenced him to life in prison because we don't really have a death penalty. And I don't know why, after 49 plus years, this man was released, was paroled. He doesn't belong back on the street. He is an embarrassment to the world, to the country, that we allowed a man like him to get out of jail without completing his life sentence. Why would we do that? Why would we parole somebody who was convicted of killing two police officers? There's something wrong with our legal system. There is something wrong with people on a parole board. This is not a man that should have been paroled. This is a violent person. Yes, maybe he changed after 50 years in prison. But in my mind, he hasn't paid the full penalty of his crimes. And there are other crimes that he is suspected of having committed. This man's name is Anthony Bottom, and he also had an alias, Jalal Muntaquim. And he was a member of the violent Black Liberation Army. That was a terror group in the 1970s and 1980s. And they carried out multiple deadly bombings, arsons, and robberies. He was a member of that gang. Now, he was convicted of killing the two New York York police officers. But he was a link to three other murders. So why, after 49 years in jail, was he paroled in October 2020? Why? And why has the university seen a reason to have this person speak? And as I said before, I'm not against the speak. I just want to know how they came to this conclusion. But it, this is, the speech is about the history of black resistance. So that's what Brockport wants to talk about. The history of black resistance. Now I'm not against resistance. I walked in many parades and things like that when I stood up for considered to be violations of people's liberties or political idea that we wanted to enforce. But black resistance, what does black resistance mean? What's he going to tell these students about why they did the deeds of destruction? It's one thing to have a rally and to fight for cause. It's another thing to go about doing actions that are like a war, when you destroy property, when you take people's lives. That's beyond the movement of resistance. That is war. And war is punished. War is punished. You belong in jail if you killed somebody. And the widow of one of these police officers blasted the university for letting this guy talk. She didn't say anything about the parole board. I would have blasted the parole board too. Her husband was not only killed, he was brutally murdered. They had him on the ground and he was pleading for his life and they shot him anyhow. He had a wife and children. Bottom, Anthony Bonnie Bottom emptied his gun into this policeman. So this wasn't an accidental killing. This was pure, unadulterated murder. And he's out. He's out after 50 years in jail. And he's speaking on the black resistance movement. No one in their right mind 
could justify a resistance movement that takes lives. It's a battle against our democracy. And yes, this country is a racist country. Still is. And it's going to take a long time for that to go away. Because it hasn't gone away in 150 years. We have pockets in this country of white supremacists and constant people attacking Asians on the streets. But to let a killer out of the jail after 50 years, something wrong with our judicial system. So the university is going to let him speak based upon a free speech issue. And he's going to talk about the Jericho Project, which is a project that he initiated in prison. And it advocates the release of political prisoners. He considers himself a political prisoner, not a murderer. So why? Why are they giving him this platform? Because he's going to tell lies to the kids anyhow. He wasn't a political prisoner. He was a murderer. And he can't stand up there and say that I had this wonderful thing called the Jericho Project. When that project consisted of people who were terrorists and murderers and whose political goals were aligned with bottoms. And the Jericho Project, on top of everything else, is anti-Israel. And it has endorsed the BDS movement. So it's free speech. And he's going to get a, an audience at the Brockport University, State University. And I can't fight about that. People are allowed to talk. I just would like to know. I would like to make sure that after they allow this person to speak, get whatever's on his mind off his chest, that they will allow some people to speak in opposition to something like the Jericho Project and to something like explaining the audience that you can't lump murderers in with political prisoners. It's a heinous crime. Murder is a heinous crime. Cold-blooded murder is even more heinous. So let this man speak, but there should be a rally around it condemning him and his Jericho project. So I leave you with that this morning, because this country doesn't know which end is up anymore. Thank you. Bye.